I'm Terrence Dollar, the host of Comic Culture. We're in Charlotte for Heroes Con 2018. We shot some interviews on the first day and we're bringing them to you now. I'm talking with Marcus Hamilton, who is the uh, daily artist for Dennis the Menace. Marcus, how long have you been on Dennis the Menace and what do you do? Well, I, next, next week it will be 25 years since I called Hank Ketchum out in California after I saw him on television. He, he was being interviewed about the new Dennis movie coming out. That was in 1993. And um, they asked him what he wanted to do now that he had drawn Dennis for over 40 years at that point. And his comment was, I want to find somebody to draw Dennis so I can travel and paint. And, and, uh, but I had this daily deadline pulling on, my, on me every day. And right when he said that, because I was out of work, I had been an illustrator for 20 years doing covers for magazines, uh, Harlequin Romance, Saturday Evening Post, things like that, which had been my goal from when I was a little kid. I, I loved illustration, and I thought if I could do magazine art, that's what I'd like to do. And um, so I'd been doing that for 21 years until computer graphics put me out of business because the art directors no longer wanted the hand-painted artwork. They, they liked that slick graphic look that I couldn't do at that time. But anyway, uh, so I ended up working at Walmart making minimum wage and I'd just turned 50 years old and that's when I was watching TV that day when Hank Ketchum said he'd like to find someone to draw Dennis. And I thought, that sounds like an opportunity. So I called an artist friend of mine, Jim Scancarelli, who lives here in Charlotte. He draws Gasoline Alley comic strip and has been for over 30 years. He and I worked together in our first job. When I came to Charlotte in 1965, Jim was my supervisor in the art department at WBTV, Channel 3. So we got to become close friends. Then he started freelancing when he left, and I went into freelancing doing magazine art. And so I called Jim that day I heard Hank Ketchum say that, and I said, do you happen to have Hank Ketchum's phone number? He said, as a matter of fact, I do. So I called Hank Ketchum out in Monterey, and I said, Mr. Ketchum, I just saw you on TV, and you said you'd like to retire someday. If you're serious about that, I would love to have the opportunity to draw Dennis. And he said, well, send me some samples of your work, and let me see what you've done. So I put together a package of... Saturday Evening Post cover of Bob Hope I had painted and Harlequin Romance covers, things like that. Nothing like Dennis the Menace and I mailed it out there. And he sent back to me, he said, Marcus, I like your work. It was a four, four page letter. I couldn't believe it when I got it back. And he said, if you're serious about pursuing Dennis, show me how you would draw him in four different situations. And he gave me the caption to go by. Well. I was ecstatic because I couldn't believe Hank Ketchum, one of the most respected cartoonists in the business, was willing to take a chance on a total stranger he had never met 3,000 miles away, but if he was willing, I was too. So I did the four drawings, sent them back out there, anxiously awaited his reply. A couple weeks later, I got a big white envelope, I opened it up, and he had sent back all of my drawings with a sheet of tracing paper over it. He had crossed out everything I had done and redrew it and out to the side wrote comments on how I could improve my drawing style to look more like his. Well, it wasn't discouraging in any way. It was encouraging because here was an opportunity to get back into artwork, cartooning instead of illustration that I'd kind of given up on when my career as an illustrator ended. I thought. I'm 50 years old, I guess that was it for me, but here was an opportunity I couldn't turn down. So Mr. Ketchum agreed to train me to take over the daily panels when he would announce his retirement. There's another cartoonist that has been doing the Sunday Dennis since 1982. His name is Ron Ferdinand, and he lives in upstate New York, but he was working with Mr. Ketchum out in the Monterey studio when Mr. Ketchum hired me and he flew me and my wife out to meet him after we had talked on the phone and 
faxed each other back and forth. And I got to work with Mr. Ketchum in his studio, and he showed me exactly the process and everything. And, and he, he really had some good advice for me. He said, I want you to understand that the daily dentist panel and the Sunday dentist comic strip are two different animals. The Sunday page has about eight or nine little panels, talk balloons, and color to tell the story. You have one single panel to tell an entire story with the gag or the caption that's at the bottom. So have fun doing it. And if you're having fun doing it, your readers will pick up on that. If it stops being fun, your readers will pick up on that and they'll stop reading. He was really, really smart. He was a, a creative genius, really. But he announced his retirement in 1994 and I started taking over the daily dentist panels and um, he would critique my work. I would fax him my sketches. He would fax back and tell me what I did wrong or how to improve it. He was a great, great uh, creative teacher, the way he taught me to take over and, and do the line illustrations. And it has been a joy, um, a challenge, because I have a weekly deadline. I have to have six panels finished regardless, you know, uh, because you've got to stay on a schedule. We're six to eight weeks ahead. So the drawings I do right now here in June will be in the newspaper in August. Um, but uh, it's just um, an opportunity that I never thought would come along. I'm glad I didn't give up when my first career ended and I was working at Walmart. If I had given up, I would not have seen what Mr. Ketchum said in that interview as an opportunity. But when he said, I want to find somebody to draw Dennis, it just, in my head, I just felt like this is an opportunity. And I'm thankful that I took advantage of it. One of the things about Dennis's art style is that the, the ink line is so bold and so, um, I'm not sure if it's if it's a brush or if it's a pen, but can you tell me a little bit about your ink process? Well, it's exactly what Mr. Ketchum did. His drawing style was very unique. He uses a croquil pen uh, that you dip in a bottle of ink. It's not the felt tip markers that a lot of cartoonists use now. Um, and the type of illustration board is Bristol board. It's thin enough that once I do my pencil sketches of the daily panel, we have writers that send us their ideas for the jokes. And um, I, every week I will pick out six of the jokes, or gags as they call them. And as I read it, I think, okay, now how would Dennis or his family or Margaret or Mr. Wilson be reacting to what that says? And in my mind, I come up with an image and I sketch it out in pencil on tracing paper once and it may take six or seven drawings before I get it to the point where it looks like I think it will tell the story then I put it on my light table meaning there's a light shining through the glass and I can put a sheet of Bristol board over that and I can see enough of my pencil sketch that I then take the the pen dip it in the bottle of ink I have one pen point uh, that's larger to draw the border I have another pinpoint to do the fine line, but the pinpoint gives enough so that it will get thick or thin, depending on the amount of pressure you put on. So I do all the drawing with that and then take a brush and fill in the large black areas with the ink. See, uh, whenever I look at the, the line, I always thought that it was a brush, but I didn't realize that you could just manipulate the, the nib that way. Yeah, and that's how Mr. Ketchum established his style. And when I came in to take over, he said, I want you to draw with the same pinpoints that I do. It's kind of hard to find those Jalot 170 pinpoints. Not many people sell them at art supply stores anymore. You have to order them. But he gave me a, a lot of them that lasted me quite a few years. So, uh, but it was a, an, an awakening to me because I'd never used a pen like that to do inking. I had a rapidiograph, which was uh, 
like a ballpoint pen in a way with different size points. When I was illustrating, if it was in black and white, that's the kind of pen I would use, not the, the kind I'm using now.